When a paving operation stops in the middle of a lane, whether overnight or for an extended period, a transverse joint is created. For airfields, it's best to stop paving for the day at a natural boundary, such as the end of a runway. This reduces the number of transverse joints, increases smoothness, and minimizes potential for foreign object debris. Airfield specifications do not allow transverse joints in different lifts to be stacked on top of each other. Transverse joints in one course must be at least 10 feet from a transverse joint in the previous course. Transverse joints in the adjacent lane must also be offset by at least 10 feet. If a transverse joint is needed, the paver should run normally past the joint location, keeping the material head in front of the screed constant to maintain a consistent angle of attack. The best practice is to pave beyond the joint, then trim the mat back to the joint location. If the paver attempts to stop exactly at the joint location, there's a risk of running out of mix before actually reaching the joint. This can cause problems like uneven pavement smoothness or water ponding. Before resuming paving in a lane, trim the joint to create a clean vertical face at the correct depth. Next, apply a tack coat. The screed elevation depends on the amount of asphalt mix beneath it. To allow for compaction, the uncompacted mix should be placed slightly higher than the adjacent cold mat. Use wooden starter blocks of the proper thickness to support the screed. These blocks are placed on the cold mat to keep the screed flat and stable as paving begins, helping it reach the desired level more quickly. Back the paver into place and build a head of material in front of the screed. Fill the receiving hopper and monitor the asphalt mixture as it moves to the area in front of the screed. If the augers do not push mix all the way to the end of the screed, use a shovel to distribute it evenly. Check material sensors at the ends of the screed to ensure they're detecting the flowing material. The material should be at least the depth of the auger shaft for the full width of the screed before pulling away from the joint. Use caution not to bury the augers at the start of paving or the screed will ride up coming off the joint and create a bump. After the paver moves off the joint, use a straight edge and a carpenter's level to verify the specified slope. Regularly check the thickness with a depth probe over the first 25 feet. Once the correct grade and slope are confirmed, the controls will maintain the desired profile. Best practice is to roll the joint transversely, starting with six inches of the drum on the new material. Each pass should cover an additional six to eight inches until the entire roller is on the hot material. Stop transverse rolling six to eight inches from the edge to avoid damage and compact the edge later during longitudinal rolling. Paving and compaction should ensure a smooth transition across the transverse joint and meet the required density on both sides. 